We're going to run through our FY 2017 uh, results, which was in March, uh, plus update you on the first couple of months of FY 18, uh, which have been, you know, we've started very strongly, so we're going to, uh, you know, let's, let's run through those. Uh, as Scott said, uh, Craig's been with us now and CFO for, for a, just under a year, and uh, you, you guys will start to see him much more in terms of company presentations, and obviously you also saw Mark. Uh, Mark's still very active and doing a great job now, Chief Commercial Officer based in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, where the commercial element has been run out of. Breast cancer is a huge uh, subject. 500,000 women are going to die um, this year of, of breast cancer, and I'm still stunned. Uh, we had a great dinner last night with one of our users in Sydney um, talking to, to a select group of investors, and I was stunned by how, how many people come up to us and said, my friend died of breast cancer. It was uh, quite staggering uh, how it really impacts almost everyone that, uh, that you meet. We as a company are based in New Zealand and Wellington. We've got 40 FTEs now. Around 25 of those are in Wellington and 15 or so overseas. The uh, technology and concepts that come out of the University of Oxford really with my PhD, but we've really kind of advanced them a great deal since then and put some really good patents and stuff around it. We have regulatory clearances, uh, lots of clinical validation, up to 185 publications now. And, yeah, we've had a good FY 2017, transitioning from a capital to a software as a service company, really building up the direct sales team rather than relying on distributors such as GE and launching a whole new product, i.e. Volpara Enterprise, an enterprise-wide quality control system on the cloud. And... As you can see on the screen, we've got 600% increase in annual recurring revenues, up to uh, 1.1 million New Zealand dollars, and a 45% increase in, in business done total contract value, up to just over 4.1. So, yeah, we felt these, these were good results. It's great to see April, May has started in, in, in a similar fashion. Just to uh, recap on some of the stuff we do, the, the, the breast, uh, on the one hand, seems like an easy object to, to image. It's uh, external to the body and it's easily accessible. Uh, however, uh, there are a lot of intricacies are around uh, imaging the breast. Point one being, for example, that you, you want to stop the breast moving during the imaging procedure, otherwise you get a blurred image. So you use breast compression uh, between two plates. However, if you overcompress the breast, uh, the woman feels a lot of uh, pain and she doesn't come back for screening. But if you undercompress the breast, she walks out of the door saying, well, that was a great exam, but the image quality is crap and uh, she gets a very high radiation dose. So there's a real kind of balance uh, between the two. And obviously you want to restrict radiation dose because you don't want to be inducing breast cancers. You know, your job is to, to save lives, not uh, induce cancers. Uh, also, uh, just on, on the right-hand side there of the image on slide four, you'll see breast positioning, uh, increasingly a very important part of our lives. The, the aim of uh, X-ray is obviously to image the whole breast and if you miss some of the chest wall, for example, and the cancer happens to be on the chest wall, then, then it, there's going to be a, a false negative, and that woman will t turn up later on with an advanced cancer and a much worse prognosis. So positioning all the tissue on the image is, is critical. The other uh, element there is breast density, which is now being commonly reported across the US and increasingly in Australia. Uh, and, and the more white tissue you've got, the higher your density and the higher your risk of breast cancer and the higher chance of that breast cancer being missed uh, during x-ray. Our job now as a company has, has kind of really expanded from just measuring breast density more accurately and more objectively to encompassing quality control across the whole spectrum. So we now monitor compression, dose, and breast positioning. And that, that really is the enterprise quality control suite. So yeah, so let's go through some of the achievements of the year. So transitioning then from that density to a complete enterprise-wide quality control system hosted on the cloud. And you know, a lot of these services uh, help reduce compliance costs. For example, instead of having one person judging every single image for quality, uh, Volpara can do that for you. You're right the way through to increasing revenues by ensuring women get the right additional imaging if they've got dense breasts. We have some very powerful drivers. It's not just a small company in New Zealand trying to drive this market. Uh, you know, the FDA has kind of come on board and 
uh, especially with their Equip uh, program, which is trying to increase the quality of imaging across the U.S. Uh, this year is, is a very much they're talking to sites about quality control. And from the 1st of January 2018, they're going to start penalising and or closing sites that don't, uh, don't meet their criteria. And the Volpara Enterprise Solution then really helps sites comply with the FDA equip. The US uh, macro regulations, which are really focusing on quality, not just quantity, are playing into our hands as well, whereby hospitals and other organisations are getting increased amounts of reimbursement if they can show that they're doing high quality work, which again, you can with enterprise. Uh, not to downgrade breast density, 32 states are now saying that women must be told their breast density, so that is increasing. Uh, the federal law is still uh, in there, but the federal law has been delayed somewhat by the whole uh, Trump uh, changeover. So it's, so it's still kind of bubbling away, but at some point it will come out. Of course, let's um, always look at the, yeah, the last point down the bottom there. Uh, breast imaging managers always have a desire for decreased cost and improved re uh, revenues, along with uh, improved care for their patients. And what we're doing really fits with those criteria. Uh, during the year, we changed then from the capital model to a software as a service model. On the density solution, we were getting on average 50,000 US dollars per contract. The average contract size we're now getting is, is near 180,000 US dollars. So that's typically for two or three years. So, so per, per year, uh, yeah, we're, we're towards 60,000 US dollars. So rather than 50,000 one off, yeah, we're 60,000 a year with all the new features of enterprise and the SaaS model. So yeah, we, yeah, we estimate the global market for these tools is over uh, $1 billion. And just to, you know, just to give you some visibility of that, that's you know, 60,000 times 9,000 sites in the US, and then you double it globally. Enterprise license then has a series of role-based licenses. So the breast imaging manager will pay $5,000 or so per year for a specific license for herself. The breast, a radiologist will also pay a similar fee, but then there's a fee per woman as well, anywhere between two and five dollars per woman. In July, uh, we brought on effectively the last of our US sales team. So all these guys have now been in place for seven to nine months. They are all now up to speed and they've now all turned in their first orders. So we're, we're very much looking forward to this coming year with an with a experienced um, sales team up and running, you know, knowing the product, knowing the company, actually knowing the customers as well. We've just brought on a recruit, uh, Kathy Williston up there, has joined us from Hologic, and she's now uh, she's onboarding manager, but effectively she's customer success manager. Her, her job is to, is, is to take on the customer from the salesperson and then to make sure that customer is, is extremely happy with what we're doing. But, but equally, you know, getting feedback, feeding it back into product development so we can make that customer even happier in the future so we have very low churn further down the road. We continue to use G and Siemens, but much more now in terms of just customer leads rather than uh, actually doing the selling for us. And I think that, that relationship is proven to be very mutually beneficial. So that's working out very nicely. The, the other angle of 2017 has been, you know, we've been through the FDA. The FDA lists all the breast imaging sites in the US, so that part is easy to find out. But really, we're trying to target those with quality issues, those that are really trying to help women with dense breast tissue, and you know, right the way down to you know, those sites which we know are failing FDA accreditation. So, so they, they, those get flagged up by the FDA, so they're a great target for us to, to step into to say, look, you know, we can help you get back online. Just to um, give you some uh, idea of the sales process, the, uh, you know, the leads are generated then through personal relationships and, and you know, the team is highly experienced. They know a huge number of potential customers. Uh, trade shows, but increasingly also now from social media and webinars. So we hosted a, a webinar recently, or a sponsored one about Equip, and we had over 1,800 registrants on that webinar, which broke all records for the company that did, that did the webinar. We've moved from having one lead come through the website per six months to basically having one come through every two or three days. And a lot of that is being driven by, by the FDA initiative Equip. 
So at this point, I'm going to ask Craig to talk through some of the numbers for the last year and the first couple of months. Cool. Thanks, Rob. Um, <clears throat> so if you have a look here, the headline figure there, 4.1 million New Zealand dollars, that's our total contract value for FY17. So that was up approximately 45% from the end of FY16. Um, you can see from this graph, we're starting to see the cyclical nature of the business. If you look at quarter one and quarter two, they're, they're reasonably low. Um, <clears throat> that's for a couple of reasons. With the majority of our business being in the U.S., April, May is the beginning of the budgeting cycle. And then also, if you look at quarter two, that's when the U.S. goes on holiday. So um, for us, April, May, where we've done almost $1.5 million of business already in FY18, uh, it's very positive. We're sort of picking up where we left off at the end of quarter four. So um, we're very bullish in terms of uh, where the, the rest of this year is heading. Important to note here as well, quarter one and quarter two last year was really where uh, we listed for the on the ASX in quarter one, and quarter two was where we were bringing on um, our U.S. sales team. So quarter three and quarter four is really when the U.S. sales team was fully engaged, understood the product, um, and had started engaging with all their, their customers or potential customers. Uh, on the right there, you can see um, we brought on in April and May Sydney Breast Clinic. Um, so that is an enterprise customer just down the road from us here. And uh, Dr. Jones, which was an existing customer who's just purchased a few more of our density product. Um, so this is really the update um, for April and May and also just showing where we ended the year in terms of annual recurring revenue. So for us as a business, um, Revenue is not the focus, it's more annual recurring revenue. Um, <clears throat> that's the revenue stream we want to build up, and that's the revenue stream we need to build up in order to get to break even. So we realized last year we started off a low base, 160000 per annum. Um, that was off our existing software maintenance agreements, so not the SaaS product because it hadn't been launched yet. So as you can see there, we launched Enterprise at the beginning of July. And um, the annual recurring revenue had increased very slowly up until September. But then as the U.S. sales guys started engaging, um, you can see that ramped up very quickly to 1.1. Um, and as you can see, we've carried on from there. And now we're at $1.54 million uh, as at the end of May. <clears throat> and also just keep in mind that April and May are couple of our slow months. So the fact that we've done $450,000 worth of business in the first two months, again, is very positive from an ARR perspective. On the right there, you'll see that's quite an important metric we're starting to track now as a business. That's the number of images we are processing through Volpara Enterprise from our various customers. At the beginning of April last year, we had pretty much none. By the end of the year, we had 530,000 images. And um, by the end of May now, We've got 790, so another 260,000 in, in only two months. That information is very important to us for a number of reasons. Uh, one being we're seeing what our customers are using the most. Um, we're seeing uh, what they're finding useful, and we can use that for product development. So we can continue to, continue to refine the existing product and also um, figure out what our next products are going to be. And then also down the track, the possibility of uh, you know, AI with any of that data we have. This is um, quite a telling slide of how the business has changed in the last 18 months. FY16, over 90% of our business was under the existing capital model. FY17, that flipped completely the other way where we did over 70% of our business under the SaaS model. Also keep in mind that that 70% was basically done in the last six months of last year. <clears throat> so um, the SaaS has really, really ramped up. And FY18, we're saying pretty much all of our business will be SaaS. And as you can see there, only 6% was capital. And that's um, a little bit of Australia and Japan. In the US so far this year, we have only done SaaS deals, basically. One other important thing to note as well, is with the SaaS deals, um, we incentivize our sales guys to um, sign up customers paying annually in advance. Um, that's obviously very important for us from a cash flow perspective. Um, so we 
highly encourage that, and um, a lot of our customers are paying annually in advance. A couple of interesting things on. Um, firstly, I'll obviously point out revenue went down in FY17, despite the 45% increase in total contract value. Um, so that's for a couple of reasons. The first one being the fact that we uh, elected to early adopt IFRS 15, the new accounting standard, which has very strict rules around revenue recognition and how you um, sort of stratify a deal and start recognizing that revenue where you have um, parts of the revenue you can recognize at a point in time once it's done, like, for example, installation, um, and then other components such as the volume license where it's per woman that we have to recognize over time. So only a small fraction of the revenue in 2017 relates to the SaaS deals, even though more than 70% of our, our business was SaaS deals. Um, <clears throat> that also feeds into the reduced gross margin, um, partly uh, due to the fact that commission um, under the new accounting standard is being recognized up front. So even if a salesperson signs a five-year deal with a customer, and he gets commission on that, we can't recognize that commission over time. We're recognizing it up front in full. So we may have only recognized $3,000 of revenue from a deal that we signed towards the end of March, but we could have $20,000 worth of commission um, front-loaded in that cost of sales figure. So obviously over time, it will work in, in our favor, but uh, at the moment, it doesn't look great. Another thing to point out here, you'll see our, our cost base, um, 10.8 million plus our cost of sales. So you're looking at about $11.5 million. We don't foresee that increasing much. Um, obviously, the one increase will be the fact that some of our U.S. salespeople onboarded during last year. Um, so they obviously wouldn't have been paid for a full year. So that will be an increase this year, just that little fraction of, of their um full-time in FY18, and then um, only other very minor increases. So we're really looking to keep our cost base as stable as possible. And now we have the team in place, we have the product in place, and we're just looking to really ramp up sales with our current team. Um, the little graph on the right there just shows our contracted revenue as at the end of FY17. So I haven't added in there <coughs> the the $1.25 million worth of business we've sold um, in April and May. So that just shows there we're starting FY18 with $1.1 million worth of revenue that we'll be recognizing at least, obviously, in addition to any capital sales and or SaaS deals we signed during this year. Um, so this slide just shows, obviously, we listed in April with the help of Morgan's, $10 million, and again in November, December, raised another $10 million at 60 cents. What you can see here is our cash balance. So of that 20 million roughly we raised, we've got $13 million left as at the end of March. Um, <clears throat> question we're getting asked is uh, your cash burn, obviously, with our operating costs. So for that, we foresee um, with contracts being paid up front and the re reasonably stable cost base that we have enough cash on hand for the next 18 to 24 months. And if we are going to need cash um, to get to cash flow break even and um, break even from a profit perspective, it will be very little. So this graph just shows our share price. Um, obviously, we peaked in November, December, October, November, December last year, um, sort of attributing the decrease to a couple of things. One, a bit of softness in the, in the market overall for biotechs. Um, uh, to a, a sort of lack of news flow from our side, um, which we are um, putting in place uh, ways to correct that. So we'll definitely have a lot more news flow and consistent news flow from us with consistent metrics, as you've just seen in the, in the previous slide. So we'll re be reporting ARR, TCV, all those things um, consistently going forward. And then the other thing is we've had... Um, uh, 45 million shares come out of escrow in April, um, and we've seen, uh, hopefully, um, we saw one sale out of that, and uh, hopefully that is behind us now. Um, we have 
another 45 million coming out of escrow in April next year, but all of those belong to the founders and directors. They're obviously fully engaged with the company, so we don't we don't foresee any any sell down over there. So hopefully the share price is just starting to go up, like it started yesterday. Uh-huh. That's great. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just forward looking a bit. Uh, obviously, yeah, we have a huge amount of data now in the cloud. So uh, towards the end of this year, we are going to start offering benchmarking. Um, I have to say, yeah, we kind of start doing this manually already. So there's a site down in Melbourne. Uh, which happens to be you know, was n- number two site uh, across all 18 enterprise sites in terms of quality. I can't tell you how, how kind of happy and excited they were to find that out. We, uh, we see this as, as going to uh, bring big value to sites going forward, also something we can charge on top of uh, what we're currently doing as well. The Tarakuzi Gate, uh, you know, this was kind of announced in October 2016. The code for it was finally released by Tara Kuzik in March 2017. The kind of cancer risk companies are now integrating that tool into their offerings, and we believe that's going to start, yes, lead to increased demand for the density product you know, to feed directly into some of those tools. The, um, the, the several reasons why we're very kind of excited about Tyra Kuzigate. One is uh, we're the only automated density tool that kind of made it in because uh, the other simply didn't work uh, well enough. Uh, two, um, it, it starts to show the power of volumetric density from Volpara over visual assessment. So, you know, so the computer is actually more powerful predictor of risk than visual assessment is. So yeah, we're going beyond what humans can do. Uh, three is um, in the US is a very clear link between t- Tara Kuzi Gate and if you're at high risk on that and reimbursement for breast MRI $800 a time. Okay. So the first time now there's a clear link between one of our products and reimbursement, uh, which is good news. Uh, it's not just a US phenomena. That article there on the screen will, will density be as big as the Angelina Jolly effect. Uh, was in Medical Observer uh, Australian uh, Newsletter very recently, in fact, a couple of weeks ago. So density is now being talked about throughout Australia at some very high levels. So I think we'll see some interesting uh, movements on that. We've talked a lot over the last uh, year now about this UK project. The UK uh, NHS breast screening guys have been evaluating Valpara and other density uh, competitors to us and have come to the conclusion that Valpara is, is the best out of, those, out of the automated systems, and that paper is being submitted now. On the basis of that, they've now got funding to do a trial implementation around Manchester. So the idea there is that they'll, they've selected eight sites around Manchester in the UK to actually put Valpara density in, to actually start working out what they're going to do with women at high risk of breast cancer. The NHS is the biggest breast cancer screening program in the world, so this is going to be major news uh, after implementation is successful and as they work towards the kind of wider implementation across the whole of the UK. Just in terms of product development, we're going to do a lot of work this year on reduced customer goods, uh, reduced cost of goods, and reduced uh, customer acquisition costs also. Uh, so by, for example, having much better online demos rather than having to go and visit sites and so on. And as uh, we, we indicated at the start then, you know, our target for this year is growing annual recurring revenue by over 200%. And we want to move from 1% to 3% of all women screened uh, in, in the uh, US.